The Aitora.com, Shidochim of Nehamadina Bat Hanavati, Aleo Haim Benester, Rahel Benina Bat Jenny, and Sara Simha Bat Sofi. There are a couple of topics that I would like to cover today, starting with Ushpizin of Aharon Akohen. We know that the celebration of Sukkot, it's all connected to Yaakov Avinu, but the celebration of Sukkot is also connected to the just a brief technical interruption. Testing. Okay. We're back. We're fixing the problem for 30 seconds. Testing. Move it back a bit. Lower the echo. A drop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't put it so far. That's it. Thank you. Beautiful. You have surrounding system now around you. Beautiful. Let's continue. Kahal Kadosh. Sorry for the technical difficulty with the sound system. Now we're back online. So we started to mention about Aharon Kohen. Anane Kavod surrounded Am Israel. Top, bottom, front, back, left, right. And besides that, there was a GPS. That was called the Anan, the special cloud that will determine when Am Israel will stay, when Am Israel will travel. The Pastor says, Al pi Hashem Isu, Al pi Hashem Yahanu. They will rest, they will come based on the godly ordinance, and they will travel based on the godly ordinance. Our Rabbi tell us that this Pasuk is telling us a lesson for life. Al pi Hashem Isu. When you travel to your life, when you go to your life, has to be Al pi Hashem. And when it comes to settle in life, also has to be Al Bi Hashem. Not only when a person is young, but when a person settles in life and is more in a retirement mode, the connection with godliness remains alive and well. Florida is a beautiful way to retire. Right? Low taxes and a lot of benefits. Next to the rabbi. Next to the rabbi on top of that. Can't be better than that. Baruch Hashem. You better be ready to dance. Beautiful. Let's continue. But why Aharon? had the zechut, the merit, of the Anane Kavod. So the short answer is, in the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, Aharon HaKohen was Ohev Shalom, Belodev Shalom. Aharon HaKohen loved the peace and pursued the peace. I remember seeing one in, a, in one of the Midrashim that says that when Aharon HaKohen passed away, there were thousands of babies named Aharon. One opinion says 24,000, other opinion says 72,000. Well, it doesn't matter which opinion we follow of the Midrash, but I think that the message of the Midrash is trying to tell us is that all these babies were born in the Zahut of Aharon Kohen. Not that Aharon Kohen gave a beracha for the wife to get pregnant, but the Midrash says that these couples were about to get divorced. And when Aharon Kohen became aware that a young or Jewish couple is about to get divorced, even in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, he went to speak to the husband, he went to speak to the wife, he said whatever he said, and Baruch Hashem, he was able to reignite the love and the respect for one another. So when it came for the wife to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a baby boy, how they named the boy? Aharon. Why? Because of the Zahut of Aharon Kohen, this baby was born. Otherwise, this baby perhaps would have never come into the world. That's why the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot says, Hillel Omer, Talmidam Shel Aharon. A person must emulate the students of Aharon Kohen. Usually, what we say about students, usually a student refers to a teacher. But how do we call Aharon? Aharon Kohen. How do we call Moshe? We call Moshe Rabbeinu. So technically, the Mishnah should have said, be like the students of Moshe. But the Mishnah doesn't say that, because there are two ways of teaching. You teach from the book, or you teach from the example. And the lessons of Aharon Kohen was, not only Ohev Shalom, every person loves peace. Is there a person who doesn't love peace? 
most of us love peace. Maybe the enemies of the Jewish people don't love peace. But every Yehudi, I believe, loves peace. But how many are rodef shalom? Yani, we pursue peace. Many times, we love peace up to a certain extent. If I have to get involved to make peace, I'm not an expert to take a step back. Aharon Kohen rolled up his sleeves and went to speak to the husband, went to speak to the wife, went to speak to the business partner in the event of a mahlomet between people. And this is how Aharon Kohen lived. Not only that, the Mishnah continues. Ohevet aperiot umkareban la Torah. What's the meaning of Ohevet aperiot? For a Harona Kohen, the fact that a person was created by a Kadosh Baruch Hu, that was enough reason to love the person. Many times when it comes to love people, we have our own criteria. To him I love, to him so so, to him I have nothing to do with him. A Harona Kohen Baruch Hashem was completely the opposite. He says, if for Olam created you, it means that Hashem believes in you. And if Hashem believes in you, and the reason why we know that Akadosh Baruch Hu believes in the person is because, as I read in some book a long time ago, that it says, what does it mean when a person is born into the world? You know what it says? That the day that a person is born is born into the world, or Olam Kabyachol is saying, I have a mission for you. And you need to fulfill this mission. And that's why the Mishnah says concerning Aharon Kohen, Ohev et aperiot. If Borei Olam created you, means that God loves you. And if God loves you, I need to love you as well. But then he says a very powerful lesson for all of us. Un kareban la Torah. He raised people to the Torah. Has the shalom that a person may come and lower the Torah for the benefit of people. God forbid, the Torah is not negotiable. The Torah is the same Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu till today, is the same Torah. This is the foundation of Aharon Kohen. So, guess what? Once Aharon Kohen is the master of Shalom, of Hev Shalom, but of Shalom, now we can understand the Anane Kavod. What the Anane Kavod do? In the daytime, the Anane Kavod were like an air conditioning room. At night, the air conditioning became heat. When you walk, the Pasuk says, Can you imagine for a moment that we are walking in the desert for 40 years and the Pasuk says, the feet did not get swollen. The clothes grew with the person. The Ananek Kabod was a drive through dry cleaners. A walk through. That's how it was. It says the Ananek Kabod will, will spread, will spray Fabriz. Today in our in the world, there is a spray called Fabriz, right? Correct? So imagine the Ananek Kabod. You walk through the Ananek Kabod, and now the Ananek Kabod freshly laundered the garments with the person. The garments grew with the person. Where all these miracles came from? Short answer, Aharon Kohen, because of the Middah of Shalom. How important is Shalom? So if we go back a minute to Perashat Naso, that discusses about the topic of the Sota, Has Shalom. What is one of the peculiar laws in the case of the Sota? That you're allowed to embrace Hashem's name in order to bring peace and love and harmony between husband and wife. Not only that, the Hafez Chaim brings a very interesting concept in the relationship of David and Melech, kingdom, at the time of Ahab, which was completely the opposite. David and Melech, Sadiq. Ahab, how was it? The opposite. Ahab was a champion in Abu Salah, in idolatry. And you know what the Hafez Chaim says? I don't understand, he says. How is it possible that the army of David and Melech that were Sadiqim experienced setbacks and casualties of war and the army of Ahab that were of the Abulda Zara as many people went to war, that many people came back. Should be the opposite. You know what the Hafez Haim says? Shelohaya de la Toria Benehem. There was no bickering among them. There was Shalom. Ah, they did Abu Dazara, 
agree that they did wrong. But the moment that there is Shalom, in the Zechut of Shalom, Bore Olam is willing to have a certain level of flexibility and acceptance. It doesn't mean, God forbid, that a person is going to be Mr. Shalom. The Pasuk says, En Shalom Amar Hashem Lebeshaim. Obviously, the peace that they had was fictitious. But guess what? Was enough merit for them to be protected during the time of war. And this was the Zechut of Aharon Kohen. But not only that, the Sukkah unites us. Look around. You are from New York. You are from Israel. Where are you from, Ivan Akimsti? New York. New York. Where are you New York? Monroe. Monroe, the Heiliger Kiryas Yol. Okay? He comes from Monroe, New York. He comes from Erez Israel. He comes from Morocco. He comes from Venezuela. He comes from Queens. Whatever we may be coming from, but what unites us together? The Sukkah. The Sukkah. We leave all the external differences outside. It doesn't matter what we, where we live, it doesn't matter how do we dress, it doesn't matter what do we drive, it doesn't matter what kind of home or property we have, we put all of the above behind us and we come to the Sukkah, which is the same message of the Ra'at Minim, as we discussed in the early days of Yom Tov. We have the four Minim, the four species that represent the highest level Torah and Mizvot, which is the Etrog, to the lowest level, which is the Araba, that represents not Torah and the Mizvot. And yet what the Torah says, put them together. The Chavat HaLevavot explains why do we put them together. So it says a person gets a Shpa'a, gets influence from their environment. Bottom line, what does it mean? It says, if a person walks, let's say, into a fish store, okay, onto a butcher store, what's what you're gonna smell like? What happens if you walk into a perfume store? It's my perfume. Hazako would you rather smell like fish or perfume? Perfume, perfume, cologne is a difference. One is diluted, one is not diluted. One is 3.4 ounces per milliliter. Talk to me, my father was in this business for 40 years, so I know the difference between all the perfume and cologne. But it doesn't matter, you can treat the smell, you know, with flavoring today. Uh, you can buy the cheaper version and it smells almost the same. But that's the difference that they have in the world of cosmetics. Perfume and, and uh, cologne is a different in price and the difference in the water content, but it doesn't matter. So we all rather smell nice. So that's what the Arba'at Aminim in a way represents. What is our hope? That Be'ezat Hashem, the Arava, can become better and better. But as Aaron Cohen says, Um Kareval La Torah. If God forbid a person will dilute the Torah, has the Shalom, that was the formula Hamabdil, of the reform and conservative and all these different labels of movements. And guess what? Now, there was a convention the other day in the reform movement, and the, what was the, the, the purpose? To learn, this was the shi'ur that they had, shi'ur tilali, by one of the reform rabbis, what techniques the Chabad Lubavitch movement uses to be mekarev people. This was their achlata. So they decided that now they're gonna start wearing the tefillin on Shabbat, and they're going to eat kosher food once a week. Oh, oh. Wow. They do in Teshuvah. Obviously, Shabbat and Tefillin don't mix. But you see, regretfully, you know, I went once or twice, I went to Germany, and I went to pray by the cabin of the Baal Shem of Michelstein, the holy Baal Shem. Then I also went to the cabin of Rabbeinu Shimshon Raphael Hirsch. Rabbeinu Shimshon Raphael Hirsch lived in one of the most challenging moments of Jewish history, around the time of the birth of the reform movement. And he was a warrior. He fought against these ideals that regretfully are taking a toll in Am Yisrael. Oh, regretfully. So what is the Mishnah of Aaron tells us? Um karevam la Torah. Going down, it only gonna bring assimilation has the Shalom. This is about the essence of Aharon Kohen, And they brings even great ideas of about Aharon Kohen, and I can supplement it with one more statement because I want to cover a few things today. Tomorrow is the Hilulah of the Peleyo Ais, the Miriam Ezer Papo. So I'm going to speak about it with Hashem, 
And tonight is also the Ushpizin of Yosef Hasatim. So I'd like to squeeze in Yosef because Moshe Shabbat, Sunday, Hoshana Rabbah, we're going to be busy with David Amelech and many other matters, but let's cover one more. The Pasuk tells us concerning the passing of Aharon Kohen. The Torah makes a difference when Moshe Rabbeinu passes away and when Aharon Kohen passes away. One of the basic differences, the Pasuk says, by Oto Kol Bet Israel. When Aharon Kohen passed away, Everyone cried, Anashim, Nashim, Betav. Men, women, and children cried for Aharon Kohen. And your question will be, how could it be? More people cried for the passing of Aharon than the passing of Moshe. When it comes to the Pasuk of Moshe, the Pasuk says, by Fuoto Kol Bene Israel. The men cried, maybe a lady cried. But since Moshe Rabbeinu was a teacher and a leader, he had interaction with Am Israel, but in a whole different level than the Aharon Kohen interaction. You know why everybody cried for Aharon Kohen's passing? According to what we understand from the Pasuk, because there was hardly a family that did not benefit from the peacemaking efforts of Aharon Kohen. If it's in the world of business or if it's in behavior, it says here in the Midrash Akadah that when Aharon Kohen will see someone, Aharon Kohen was a Navi. Aharon Kohen was a Kohen Gadol. So we need to understand that when we say Aharon Kohen, perhaps in certain areas he was not like Moshe Rabbeinu, but guess what? He was equal to Moshe Rabbeinu. That's why many times the Masuk says, Moshe ve Aharon, Aharon u Moshe. Why the Torah reverses the order of the Sabbatim? To tell us they were equal. So it says that when Aharon a Kohen will see somebody on the street, Aharon a Kohen was already able to smell the person. Guess what? One of the qualifications that Mashiach needs to have is about the power of smell, not cologne, and not perfume, and not all spice deodorant, but the smell of the ma'asim tovim. The Pasuk says, Ki lo Hashem. Sur mishelo, ruach apenu, Mashiach Hashem. Mashiach is going to smell the person, the smell of Averot. The smell of Ma'asim Tovim. Where do we learn the power of smell represents Irat Shabbat? From his Hakavino. Re'eh, re'ah beni, kere'ah hasadeh, Hashem berecho Hashem. When Yaakov Avino was standing in front of his hak, what does his hak says? Smells the Gan Eden. So guess what? Aharon Kohen was able to sense the Irat Shabbat of the person. So imagine yourself, Aharon Kohen comes to any of us and shakes our hands. Are you doing? How are you? I'm so happy to see you. It says here that the next day, when this fellow, that maybe his behavior wasn't the best, he was about to do an avon. Just the thought of the shaking of the hand of Aharon Kohen influenced the person to exercise self-control. So this was, in a way, the Zahut of Aharon Kohen, and we need to know one thing. When there is Shalom, there is Hashem's protection. How do we learn this? If you look in the Baal Turim, he explains about the name of Esav and the name of Shalom. The name of Esav and Shalom are exactly the same gematria, 376. So what is the Baal Turim tell us? Either you are Shalom, or you are a follower of Esav. What does it mean? Shalom is the Midah of Aharon Kohen. Mahloket is the Midah of Esav. And we know very well what it says. Eveboreach min ha-mahloket, keboreach min ha A person is to run away from arguments, strife, fighting and bickering among people, like you run away from fire. Not only that. We talk about the topic of Shalom Bay, the case of the Soda, but how much emphasis is placed on Shalom Bay? How much emphasis is placed to have harmony among people? Shalom ben Adam ben Guess what? Shalom is welcoming God in our home. Not only that, 
I repeat what Rabbi Haim Palachi said. Azahir Basuka. No, that was not Rabbi Haim Palachi. That was something else. The Rabbeinu Hari says, a person that is meticulous in the mitzvah of Sukkah, muftah lo, shelo yari mi mishto kol ha-shana kula. Guaranteed, no shalom bayit issues. How could it be? How could it be that because a person eats in the Sukkah, automatically the shalom bayit will be the best? I'm not sure if I can say the word automatic. But if we remember in the prayers, in our tefillot, every night of our life, we mention the concept of sukkah. Ufrosa aleno sukkah shalomecha. Ufrosa aleno sukkah rahamim beshalom. So what do we see? That every time in our prayers, the word sukkah is appear in the Ashkiveno in Arvid, right away I have which word? Hazavaru. Shalomecha. It says the sukkah brings harmony to the person's life. Why? Short answer. Because when we come into the sukkah, it's not only the remembrance of the clouds of glory, the remembrance of Yaakov Abino building Sukkot, or we dwell in Sukkot when we left Egypt. Remember what we learned ahead of Sukkot? That the word sukkah actually represents two of Hashem's names. Samahe Alef Dalet Nun Yod Amonai 65 and Vav Chav Chav He Yod Ke Vav Ke So when we come into the Sukkah I'm coming to the chamber of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ki Ispeneni Besukkot Beyom Ra'a Yemaleteni It says the Sukkah is a refuge The Sukkah is a witness protection program that Bila Meder says that's what David Amelia says. Chapter 26. The Yomra, in the day of hardship, difficulty, Yastireni, Besetera Holo, I will be protected by the Sukkah. And that's why this chapter of the Hilim is very relevant to this time of the year. I'd like to finish one more sentence about Aharona Kohen. That, interesting enough, you know, Many times we remember the passing of Sadiqim. Most of the Sadiqim that we remember, we have, let's call it a, 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 a tradition, so to speak, or relevant information that tells us the your take of a Sadiq. Yesterday was Rabbi Nahman of Resta. Today, uh, I think, uh, tomorrow rather, Pele Yoes. Today, Yehudi Kadosh Simchapuni Mopshitzke, I think it's today. And yet, from the Avot, from the Imahot, we don't know from the Torah when they passed away. We have sources, Sefer Yashar, Sefer Dorot, different Midrashim tells us when Sadiqim passed away, with one exception, Aharon Kohen. Aharon Kohen in the entire Torah, from Bereshit, till Bezot HaBelacha, he's the only Sadiq that the Torah tells me the day of his passing. How many times? Three times. When Aharon HaKohen passed away, Rosh Chodesh Menachem Ava. Bahodesh HaChamishi Be'ehad LaChodesh. Rosh Chodesh Menachem Ava, Aharon HaKohen passed away. And the question is, why? Why Aharon? has to have his passing recorded in the Torah. And what's the information that the Torah tells me? By the way, Aharon Kohen passed away, Rosh Chodesh Menachem Ab. I believe that there is no coincidence that the Torah talks about Aharon's and his passing. Because we need to remember, once we say the month of Ab, what comes to our mind? Shabbat Okay? The, the day of national mourning for Am Israel, many calamities took happen in the days of Tishabiab. So the Gemara tells us why Tishabiab happened. Why the destruction of the Beta Mikdash? 
especially the second Beit HaMikdash. Why the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed? There was no unity among people. There was a lot of mahloket among people. Sinat Hinnab, right? Aharon was not there. But Aharon Kohen passed away, give or take, between the first temple, between the second temple and Aharon Kohen was approximately at least a thousand years. At least a thousand years. But you know what the Torah is hinting us? That the Midah of Aharon to increase peace and harmony among people can reverse the tragedy of the month of Av. And that's the reason why the Torah mentioned, you want to know what is our due diligence in the month of Av? The life of Aharon and Kohen. If we implement or activate in our personal life, as you know, we mentioned the other day, charity begins at home, right? Aniecha Kotmin. Okay, although this statement from the Talmud refers to the topic of giving charity to your close friends and relatives, but you know what it also says in the book of Shalom Bayi? That charity begins at home between husband and wife. So if you want to make Shalom, make sure that your home is okay. Be'yadata ki Shalom o'halecha, the Pasuk says. First line of duty, Shalom between you and your wife, you and your kids, and then you start dealing with the rest of the world. I'm not saying that the rest of the world is not important, but if you have no shalom in your home, guess what? God is not a permanent resident in your home. The Gemara already says, Ish beisha zahu shechina sheluya benehem. The Gemara says very clearly, husband and wife have the proper husband and wife relationship there is the godly essence at home. Guess what? Our home is also a sukkah. Even though that the sukkah, it has a lot of halakhic requirements, the walls, the rooftop, etc. But if we go back to what I said a few moments ago, that the sukkah is connected shalom, and the essence of shalom in their home brings godliness, shalom bait in their home brings godliness. So guess what? There is no difference between your home and the sukkah. The only difference is that at home you have your bed and your air conditioning, but you can have a luxurious home, but the house could be a gehinnam, has a shalom. God forbid, the house could be surrounded with mahloket, animosity between husband and wife, God forbid. I hope I'm only, I'm only just talking and it doesn't apply to anyone watching or listening. But I think that this is a very powerful message today in honor of the Hilula of Aharon Kohen. Okay, so I think I spoke enough. 26 minutes. No, 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 no. I know, no, no, no. This is only the first oh, part of the class, right? Oh, oh. Now we go to a commercial and then we'll come back. Stay tuned for 10 seconds. Shabbat Chalam Tonight we welcome Yosef Asadik. Now, I'll throw in a couple of halachot, since this question already came up several times. What is the Kiddush of Shabbat Cholam Is regular Shabbat Kiddush? We do not say Shehiyanu, but we do say Leshev Basukah at the end of the Kiddush, especially if you're having the meal and Amosi in the Sukkah. When we're going to make Amosi tonight, we're going to be in the Sukkah Be'ezat Hashem, and we're going to say Leshev Basukah. The next question that came up is if tonight we say Shalom Aleichem or not. So interesting enough, based on what I saw the other day in the Be'er HaHaim, quoting Rabbeinu Ha'ari, it seems that we do not say Shalom Aleichem on Shabbat Cholam Mo'ed. I will tell you a disclaimer. There could be different traditions who say Shalom Aleichem, but believe me, saying Shalom Aleichem in the night of Shabbat Chol Moed is not going to hinder you or hurt you. Has the Shalom the opposite. But what could be the Sevara of not saying Shalom Aleichem? Out of the Kavod to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Because if we are saying that the Sukkah, everything of the Sukkah represents Hashem's essence, the two names of Hashem's name, so how can I say Shalom Aleichem to the Malachim? 
is a making the Malachim Kaviachol. So you know what the Ben Oari says? That the Malachim stay outside of the door of the Sukkah, not to take away from the Kavod that we give to Akadosh Baruch Hu in the Sukkah. But I'm not here to change anybody's life, especially when it comes to traditions. So if your tradition is to say Shalom Aleichem, Mishka Ferlach, not a big deal. And if your tradition is not to say Shalom Aleichem, also good. Okay? So I throw this because this question came up several times already today. I don't say Shalom Aleichem in Cholam there is another opinion who says, say it quietly, instead of saying it three times, say it one time. But you know what? This is more based on tradition than halakha. The halakha is that tonight we make regular Shabbat Kiddush, Yom HaShishi, Vaychulu HaShamayim Vehaares, and we say, Neshev Basuka, at the end, and no Shehiyanu. That is number one. Number two, concerning Hosha'anot tomorrow. There is different opinions in the halakha if Hoshanot are said on Shabbat or not. According to the Syrian tradition, we do say Hoshanot on Shabbat. We don't make the hakafot and we don't take out the Sefer Torah for the Teva like we do during Hola Moed. It could be other traditions who don't say Hoshanot, but each person should follow their tradition or the minhag of the synagogue where people pray. What else? Talachot, regular Shabbat, two sefers, etc. Let's talk about tonight to Shpizi. So we know, and we already discussed this in the first day of Yom Tov, that every night, yes, we're going to have the Musaf of Shabbat, Cholam correct. That every night we welcome the Shpizi. Tonight, we welcome Yosef Asatik, the six of the Shpizi. In the weeks of the Omer, we learn the Sefirot, what Yosef HaSadik represents. Yosef HaSadik represents the Midah of Yesod. Yesod in English means the foundation of holiness of a person. Like a building needs to have good foundation, the building may look very elegant and very beautiful and very colorful. But guess what? Sometimes you need to invest a lot of money on the foundation for that beautiful building to be allowed to be built. Meaning to say that you have a hidden cost of construction that is not seen. This is the foundation of the, of the building. In the, of the person, there is also foundation. What is the foundation of a Yehudi? If you look at the human body, different parts of the body, connects to different sefirot. For example, the head has three sefirot. Chokmah, Bina, Da'at. Wisdom, knowledge and understanding all related to the brain. Then we have the right hand. This is Abraham Avinu, Hesed. The left hand is Hakavinu Gebura. Then you have the torso. You have Yaakov Avinu. Then you have Moshe and Aharon, the right leg and the left leg. And then who do you have? Yosef Asadik between the legs, the Berit Bila. This is the foundation of holiness of a person. The holiness of a person is determined how careful is the person with the Berit Bila. How does a person sleep, position, doing things which are inappropriate, which are forbidden, and we apologize for the female audience listening or watching, but in the ladies' department, there is also a yesod. What is the yesod? Taharat mishpacha, family purity. When the wife goes to the minve, this is her participation in the holiness of the husband. And when the husband behaves properly, and I'm trying to be respectful because we have a very young audience with us today, and we have ladies listening and watching. So when a man behaves properly with his Berit Mila, and the wife observes properly the loss of family purity, and she goes to the mikvah on a monthly basis as long as the body requires, between them, they are working on the Yesod of Hirat Shamayim. 
the foundation of godliness. Meaning to say that a person may do a lot of misbot, but if the misbah of milah is shaky, that person needs to improve and enhance. Remember yesterday in the Hilula of the Tahman of Resident, we mentioned saying the Tikkun Klali, right? The 10 special chapters of the Hilim going to the Mikveh. All these things bring personal protection to the person from a spiritual element. And not only that, also Shemirat Ha'inai, watching the eyes, what a person watches, what a person sees. And this was, by the way, one of the great merits of Yosef Sadiq. Can you imagine for a minute living in Egypt as a teenager by yourself without Safra Synagogue, without Kolel, without Mikves, without nothing? God forbid, if Yosef Sadiq, God forbid, would have fallen spiritually, we understand Hazid. Nebuch. He was by himself. He had no support. And yet Yosef Asadik remained holy and pure. Exactly. How did he do? Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu. Yosef ben Sheva Isre Shana. For the 17 years of the life of Yosef, Yaakov invested in him tremendously. But you know what else was the power of Yosef HaSaddiq? Shemirat Ha'inai. Yosef HaSaddiq will walk around with the head down. Yosef HaSaddiq was a good looking fellow. I don't know what that means in a man. But this is what's written. Yosef had the beauty of his mother. Rahel Hayeta Yefat Tohar Betovat Mahi. This was the beauty of Rahel. The Zohar Kadosh says that the beauty of Rahel was transferred to Yosef HaSaddiq. Such of elegance Yosef HaSaddiq had, and I'm not going to say what I'm going to say, but I think I should say it, that ladies who looked at Yosef, fill in the blanks. So imagine yourself, now Yosef is promoted to be the concierge of Potiphar. Even Potiphar, Potiphar himself, like Yosef Asadik. Has the Shalom. Zuleitha, the wife of Potiphar, also liked Yosef Asadik. And she was told that she will have a child from Yosef. What happened with her? For a whole year, three times a day, she would change outfits in order to find grace in the eyes of Yosef. And Yosef ignored her. And the Pasuk says, Yosef Asadik was involved of everything. Ki malechem asher haya ochel. The only thing that was off limits to Yosef Asadik was Zuleikha, the wife of Potiphar. Everything else, Yosef Asadik had a slaha. The Zohar Kadosh writes that Yosef, you ask a very good question. How did Yosef survive? So I gave you one answer. He remembered the Torah of his father. You know what the Zohar says? That every day, Yosef Asadik was murmuring Pesukim of Tehillim. Maybe not in the format that we know today, but he was talking to Hashem. He was making it Bodedut in Mizraim. He was talking to Hashem. Hashem me'ayin yavo azri. Azri me'ayin Hashem ose shamayin ba'aris. With the Muna, Yosef survived. Even when Paro calls Yosef, what part of Yosef says? Ha'elokim ya'anel shalom Paro. I'm nothing, he says. I'm a tape recorder, Yosef Asadik says. Whatever God says, Hashem will answer. The Zohar Kadosh says that Potiphar was afraid that Yosef, when he was murmuring and praying to Hashem, he was actually doing Ma'aseh Hishuf. He wanted to, to bamboozle, to witchcraft, so to speak, uh, 
Potiphar. And one day Potiphar says, who are you talking to? I'm talking to God. Who is your God? The creator of the world. The Zohar says what I'm going to say now. It's not a joke. He says Potiphar wanted to test Yosef as a king. To see if the emuna of Yosef, and whatever Yosef was saying, I'm here because God sent me. And this is what the Torah certifies later on when the brothers of Yosef, remember the brothers of Yosef came? And what the Pasuk says, that the brothers became very embarrassed yeah. now that Yosef says, Ani Yosef ha hai. What does Yosef say? Don't worry. He says, you think that you sent me? God sent me. Why the Torah spends so much time and resources in telling me all these details? Short answer to teach us how to survive. You think that the challenges of yourself are less challenging today? Today we have more challenges than Yosef. On the street, on the cell phones, that's why there is so much, so many campaigns in synagogues, in yeshivot, that cell phones should have filters. In a certain day, you have to look for the Yeserara. Now the Yeserara sleeps with you. How many people sleep with a cell phone? Everybody. I think everybody. I try not to. I keep it away from my bed. Why? Just reading the news. You have an unexpected Yeserara visiting your home. You have Neshama. That's why there is so much today, Shemira Ta'inayim, uh, guard your eyes, that com, that is a wonderful <coughs> website. Guard your eyes. I think it's G-Y-E, that org, that com. You go there, you register, and they send you daily messages to be mehazek, to reinforce the eyes, which has to do with the heart, and has to do with the Berit Milan. So the Zohar says that Potiphar wanted to test Yosef as a thing. So what did he do? Yosef, as I said before, was basically the manager of the palace of Potiphar. And Yosef was in charge of giving breakfast to Potiphar. Imagine yourself, Potiphar sees the breakfast, let's say, Bagels, cream cheese, tomatoes, egg salad, coffee, tea, nice breakfast, right? Suddenly, when the food is in the hand of Yosef, Potiphar says, today I'm in the mood of pancakes, strawberry and whipped cream. The Zohar says that on the spot, the food change. It's difficult for us to believe, right? How much effort it takes to make breakfast, right? It takes effort. <laughs> but Yosef the Pasuk says, Behol Asher Wose, Hashem Masriah Beyado. By ye Hashem et Yosef. God was with Yosef as a dick. Whatever Yosef as a dick needed, Hashem came to the rescue. Why? Because a person that has a man, a young man, but I'm saying now it doesn't exempt young men. How old are you? 13, how old are you? How old are you? 11, you're very warm to our meeting. So what I just said is not only to men, it's applicable to every boy. Now, it says that emuna and dikuna yesod are connected. If a person emuna is shaking, it's because the yesod is shaking. And if the yesod is shaking, the emuna is shaking. Why? Because emuna and yesod, yesod means foundation, are the pillars of Judaism. Is that a person says, God, I want to observe the, the Mishkot, but I don't want to be Shabbat. 
doesn't make sense. Shabbat, right, is the umbilical cord that connects us with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. The Berit Mila is the umbilical cord of sanctity. How do we learn this? From the Birkat Amazon. Be'al Beritecha Shehatam Tavit Sareno Be'al Toratecha Shelimatan The Mila is Hashem's seal on the human body. And you know what this blessing says? Sometimes a person's Torah doesn't enter. Could be a Shiva student, could be a businessman, but somehow him and the Torah have a, a, a distance. You know why that distance happened? Because the Berit Mila needs to be taken care of. Meaning to say, Shemirat Haberit. And there are Mishyonot. That's why the Lachar says how to sleep. How do we sleep? How does the Jew sleep? Not on your stomach, right? Not on your back. You sleep on your side. And don't put your hands between the legs. Because anything can create, God forbid, a physical reaction that God forbid may lead the person, the serious avon of Zera, Leva Tala, God forbid. And this is the message of Yosef Asadik. Yosef Asadik says, a Jew needs to know that holiness is our middle name. Otherwise, if holiness is not part of our life, excuse me? No, that is very extreme to say. Okay, I understand what you're trying to say. He's speaking in code. He says that if a person is not careful with the Berit Mila, the Neshama goes into a dark mode. Because godliness stays away. Now, you ask yourself, why the severity of this transgression, of wasting Zera? Why this transgression is so severe? Very simple, because the Zera is the life of the person, and there are Neshamot in every drop of Zera. And if God forbid the person wastes the Zera, it's that like we did not help this Neshamot. Kilkalno sinorota shefa, it says in the Zerichot. Sometimes people ask themselves, why I'm having issues of Parnasa? Guess what? Parnasa is affected by anger. Parnasa is affected by vulgarity and, and foul language. And Parnasa is affected by the Avon of Zera Levantada. God says, you're killing people. You're killing souls. This is a verse that we said in the Vidui of Kippur, that we are crying to Hashem, woe to the souls that I killed. Who did you kill? We killed by wasting zero. That is the reason why that in Jerusalem and the Syrian tradition is the same. Sons don't go to the burial. Why? Why sons don't go to the burial? Shouldn't be kavod that you go to the burial of your father? You are allowed to go into the cemetery once the body is lowered. But when you get there, you wait outside. You know why? Because of the topic that I'm talking about. When a father, God forbid, passes away, two sons, two different types of children, escort the remains to the grave. The children that were born and the children that were not born. Why children were not born? Because Zera was wasted. So what happens now? Two things. Now, the children that are born in a physical body and they are by the grave, now they are under the scope of jealousy by the souls that never merited to be formated into a human body. And guess what? That problem on one side of the grave 
you have the physical children. On the other side of this grave, you have the children that were not merited to be born into a human body. Guess what? On the spot, this creates an accusation to the dead body. So for that reason, to protect the dead, stay away. Once the body is lowered, then you're allowed to come in and do whatever it needs to be done. I know that this topic is a bit heavy and very serious, but guess what? This is the secret and the survival and the success of Yosef Hasadik. Guess what? You know what should have been our name as a nation? How are we called as a nation? Bene Israel. What other name we are called? Israel. Yehudim. You know what? Our name should have been Yosefim. Not Yehudim. Is a pasuk in the book of the Hillim. Bene Yaakov be Yosef Sela. The sons of Yaakov and Yosef. So why we will have the opportunity to be called Yosefim? Two reasons. Reason number one, survival. We all are survivors. Survivors of the generation, survivors of the challenges of history, survivors of anti-Semitism. So every time that a Yehudi, if it's in Israel or all over the world, is acting the way a Yehudi is supposed to act, we are in a way mimicking Yosef as a dick. You follow? Make sense? So then why we are called Yehudim? Good question, right? Yehudim, it has a couple of important messages hidden. Number one, Yehudas, Hashem's name. Yod Ke Vav Ke. It has Hashem's name of the four letters with a letter Dalet in the middle. The letter Dalet also representing the four letters of Hashem's name. But Yehuda had the merit of being the first one that Le'ah was Modeh to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Hoda'ah. Hoda'ah means gratitude, thankfulness. So Yehudi must always be thankful to Akadosh Baruch Hu. So in a way, we carry part of Yehuda and part of Yosef. But Yosef carries one more message and Yehuda carries one more message. What is the message of Yehuda? We mentioned this for 40 days in the Sinichot. The Basuk mentions the importance of recognizing our shortcomings, recognizing our mistake. Mehila, I made an abon. Mehila, I made a mistake. Please forgive me, we move on. And Yehuda was the master teacher. Remember the incident of Tamar? When Tamar, the daughter-in-law of Yehuda, became pregnant and she was about to be executed? What did Tamar say? She didn't point the finger to Yehuda. Yehuda, you are the father of the baby. What does she say? Whoever owns these objects is the father of the baby. Imagine yourself, you are Yehuda. Next to you is Ishaq Avinu. Next to you is Yaakov Avinu. They are the Bedin judging Tamar. Why they needed the Bedin to judge Tamar? Because Tamar was the daughter of Shem. Shem, the son of Noah, was the Kohen Gadol. And when it comes to dealing with the daughter of a Kohen Gadol, there are special laws that apply. So instead of Yehuda giving the ruling and staying quiet, what Yehuda says, she is right. I'm the father of the baby. So what do we understand from Yehuda? Recognition. Recognizing the mistake. Where Yehuda gets this essence from his mother Leah. Because Leah was the first person in the world who truly expressed her gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Why? Because she got more than she expected. She figured, Yaakov Avinu has four wives, he needs to have 12 children, four wives, three kids per wife, easy. Now she gets child number four. 
הפעם מודה את השם. Every time she called Yehuda by name, she was expressing her gratitude to Bore Olam. So this is Yehuda. Now we have Yosef. Do you know the meaning of the word Yosef? Yosef means what? To add, to increase. That is the lesson of Yosef. A Yehudi cannot settle. A Yehudi cannot settle. Settle is with a credit card, with a bank, with a mortgage, with a bill, with a debt, with a hospital bill, you can settle by the way. You need help, let me know. Okay? I hope you never need. Okay? But settlement, we understand in the world of business. But in the world of spiritual life, if a person settles, it's like we throwing in the towel. The Gemara writes, Ma'alim Bakodesh. Oh, your father never did it? Your father didn't go to Ketab. Your father didn't live next to a synagogue. You, you told me the story yesterday, right? Arizona. Arizona, right? He told me the story of the dangers of the environment. He used to live in Arizona. And if he would have stayed in Arizona, we would have been going. Look how easy he's saying it. Same thing with my mother. My grandfather came from Halab. They moved to a, to a province, and then there was one hiccup. My grandmother said the next day, we're going back. Sell the house, burn the house, get rid of the house, I don't care. We're not staying. And many families, Baruch Hashem, they were able to open up their eyes and to sense the danger of assimilation. Imagine yourself, God forbid, if your parents don't take that decision. You would have not been here, yeah. and who knows if I would have been here. He would have not been here neither, because assimilation, it shuts down the continuity of Am Israel. And this is Yosef. Yosef is Mosif. Mosif Beholech. Continue. You want your business to, to grow. You want your family to grow. You want a bigger house. You want a bigger car. You want a bigger bank account. What about your Neshama? That is the message of Yosef as a king. So tonight will be Yosef visiting. So remember to say Deus PC. I'm really tempted, and it's dangerous what I'm going to say now. I'm really tempted to continue talking. I need to be respectful of the audience all around. So, I'm going to talk maybe two, three minutes about Oshana Rabba. Belly Nether, Saturday night, Mosai Shabbat. We're going to have class through the night. Belly Nether, I will remember that willing to record the class and send the class to everybody. But at least those watching, the importance of the night of Oshana Rabba. The word Hosha'ana means salvation. Hosha, salvation, Na is the 51 day from Rosh Chodesh Elul. Remember, Seyechot started in Elul. If you count every day till tomorrow night, is the 51 day of Rosh Chodesh Elul. Rabba means great salvation. Why great salvation? The Zohar Kadosh writes, and I have the source right in front of me. It says very clearly, because in the night and day of Hoshana Arba, the person can get an upgrade of the decree that was given to us in the night of Yom Kippur. And it says clearly, even though that Yom, the day of Hoshana Arba is the day of judgment, in that day, the files for every person are going to be delivered, but we have one benefit, that the files are not open until the morning of Shemini Asere. So God gives us an extra chance, 24 hours of prayers of the Shabbat. That is the reason why the universal tradition is to stay up through the night of Hoshana Rabba. We read Sefer Devarim Mishneh Torah, we read the book of Tehillim, we say seven mini-serichot, and 
we have classes discussing the essence of the day. So whatever may have happened in the night of Ni'ilah, now we have an opportunity for an upgrade. And this is additional kindness of Akadosh Baruch Hu to the person. Also, the prayers of Hoshana Rabbah that will take place that will be Sunday morning are much longer than usual because we have Halel, Sefer Torah, we have seven Hakafot, seven mini Selichot, we finish the prayer with the Musaf, and then we do the special ceremony of healing the Araba on the ground, but that will in Sunday, very nether, we talk about it, and Sunday morning, after we finish the prayer, we say the beautiful prayer of Mishmat, which is like an insurance policy to be alive next year by the same time. So based on everything that I said, and I'm giving you the very, 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 very short version, a person has an opportunity to upgrade their judgment for good and for better. Not only that, the Shari Sahar writes that when a person, the way the person prays, Hoshana Rabbah, Shemini Asenet, and Simchat Torah, these three mega days, and words are not enough to describe the greatness of these days. That's why I'm not saying anything. Through the holiday, Be'ezet Hashem, we'll have more time, we'll talk about it accordingly. Time around. But bottom line, the Shari Safari says that the prayers of the entire year depend on the prayers of these three days. Something very fascinating. I'm investing in the next 72 hours for an entire year. He said, you have a great customer, three days of business, you'll cover your entire salary and budget. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't that be great? Does it happen in the world of business? You need a lot of good days. Guess what? Spirituality, it goes on the sun pass, on the easy pass. You go on a hybrid, you don't pay tolls. Why? Because these are three days of mega connection with Akadosh Baruch Hu. And the Zohar Kadosh discusses about the power of the Shuvah. And it says, take advantage of this mega day that we have coming in these particular days. That's the reason why we know that at the end we take the Aravot. We take the Aravot and we don't say a Berakha. We say, Habit, Habit, Bela, Barich. We hit the Araba on the ground, on natural soil, on the grass, not on stone, not on cement, because that will defeat the whole reason why you beat the Araba. There is a Mahloket in the Gemara, if this is Minhat Nevi'im, Allah Chalem Moshe Misinai, Mahloket, we don't say Beracha. That's what we say, Habit, Habit, Bela, Berich. No Beracha for this tradition. But why do I make the effort of taking five leaves of the Aravot. At the end of the day, the Aravot of the Sukkot holiday, what part of the body they represent? The, the lips. The lips of the person. Why the lips? Lashonara. You know why I eat it on a quiet soil? So the Malachim don't open their mouth to accuse us in front of the heavens. That's the reason why you take five leaves, five, five, not leaves, I shouldn't say leaves, five, five, stalks. five stalks, that's the proper word, five stalks of Aravot to be metaken, the five parts of the Neshama, five stalks of the Aravot for the Mansafah, for the five letters in the Hebrew alphabet that they are connected to Gevura, to the attribute of judgment. So not don't minimize any of the things that are happening because every step that I describe, and I apologize due to my shortness on the talking on this topic, but I'm already an hour talking, okay, so I need to know my limitations as well, but understand that every tradition that we have, there is a spiritual reaction and a spiritual benefit. Sometimes it's known and sometimes it's not known. One more thing. The 
Maharal of Prague says that especially is a famous Gemara in Masechet Shabbat concerning answering Amen properly. Amen says the merit of a person answering Amen properly, Amen it breaks the decrees. Can you imagine? How many times a day do we say Amen? 90 times, give or take. Amen maybe 10 times. But Amenim scattered through the Amen, Amirachot, Sharia Sibur, Hazara, 90 Amenim. So the Maral of Prague says that in the idea of the day of Hoshana Rabbah, a person is able to activate something called Metikat Hadinim. What's the meaning of Metikat Hadinim? The sweetening of judgment. In other words, we can reverse judgment into kindness. How do we do that? I mentioned this in one of the classes concerning Gamzu Litova, Nahumish Gamzu. You may have heard this. The Baal Shem Tov says that when Nahum used to say Gamzu Litova, the moment that he invoked the word Tova is for a good reason, the hardship turned into kindness. Obviously, it takes a lot of mental exercise and effort that every hiccup and every setback the person says Gamzu Tova. But I think what the Maral of Prague is trying to say is that the day of Hoshana Rabbah, like the Amen properly answered, can reverse the crease, the Zahut of Hoshana Rabbah also can reverse the crease against the person. I mentioned before about the Yula of the Bele Yoes, the Bele Yoezer Papa. So, regretfully, I don't have a book on me. Anybody has Ublech Dechava Derech up? Ublech Dechava Derech, you have it? I'd like to read a small paragraph. Thank you so much. Beautiful. 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 The Billy has a papo. He lived approximately 200 years ago. Great Amit Hacham. Baruch Hashem, we learned several times for several years. Peleos. But being on Shabbat, I'll give a sample today. And very neither tomorrow afternoon, we learn a bit more the great rabbi. So it says, he writes in the book, that whoever learned from his book, he will take care of whatever they need. He will be your attorney in Shemaim. Which not too many Sadiqim can say this. But if you look in the introduction of the Peleo Ice, that's what he writes. And I'm going to read you about two topics because even though we are moving towards the end of Sukkot, but we still have 48 hours in the Sukkot. Today, tonight, Oshana Rabbah, and according to the Sephardic tradition outside of Israel, the day of Shemini Aseret. Even though we don't say Neshepa Sukkah, but we eat in the Sukkah. And it says, the Mizvah of Sukkah is a very important Mizvah that comes to us once a year. And great is the benefit of the Jewish nation worldwide that they devote time and essence and investment and beauty in order to make a beautiful Sukkah, an elegant Sukkah. But there are people that regretfully they become lazy to this Mizvah and they find many excuses why not to eat in the Sukkah. But I give them a friendly advice that this Mizvah of Sukkah can protect the person of being evicted from their home if God forbid that decree was given in the day of Kippur. 
But not only that, the more a person spends time in the sukkah, the more godly protection comes on the life of the person, especially with the presence and the welcoming days of the Ushmisim that we discussed at length. It was said about Rabbi Ari that he would be careful of not to talk topics which were not relevant to the Mizvah of Sukkah, and a person must make the effort to sit in the Sukkah with the proper behavior, proper respect, but above anything else, bring happiness, because, and this is a fascinating Hidush, it says the time spent in the Sukkah, it adds extra godliness to the, to the mind, to the body of the spirit and how effort, how much effort the person invested to celebrate support in the sukkah, how successful the person will be during his holy service throughout the entire year. Unbelievable benefit that comes to the uh, sukkah. And then he says about the mitzvah of Lulav and Etrog, something that we have discussed for a very long time. And then he says one more concept. It says that a person needs to know that the simha of Sukkot, it says in the name of Rabbeinu Ali, whoever is happy in the celebration of Sukkot, muftahlo, sheya'alelo shana tova, Guaranteed that the person will have a great year and will live a very happy life. Amen. So it says the Peleo is if we have now these guarantees, who will waste the opportunity of capitalizing on the blessing that the celebration of Sukkot brings upon us? It says a person is granted the power to remove from their brain headaches. I'm not talking about physical headaches, but I'm talking about hardships and negative thoughts. The opposite. And be happy with Simha. As the Zohar Kadosh says, you know how happiness can be part of a person's life when a person has proper and good thoughts in their mind. The more positive a person thinks, the more positive the mind functions, the more happy the person becomes. And then he says, if that's the case, I'll take advantage of the blessings that Hashem is distributing in these mega days for the celebration of uh, Sukkot. And he continues talking, but we'll say that tomorrow by Ezat Hashem. But I didn't want to go and cancel the class, or finish the class rather, without mention a bit from the Pele Yoes that by Ezat Hashem Shabbat will be the Hilul of the Pele Yoes, the Bilia Ezer Papo. So I encourage you before Shabbat, light a candle in his memory, give charity in his memory, make a prayer that he will be your messenger to the Almighty. And by Ezat Hashem, uh, we learn on Shabbat beautiful concepts about the lessons and the messages of the great Rabbi Eliezer Papo. So here it's on, let it be the Zahut of today, Saharona Kohen. Tomorrow, tonight, Shabbat, Kola Mo'ed Yosef HaSadik and Rabbi Eliezer Papo, that the Zahut of all these Sadikim will bring upon us all the magnificent blessings Amen. that the beautiful celebration of Sukkot has Amen. for each and every one of Amen. us. Baruch Adonai Ya'olea.